Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, pre-commission meeting today. It's Tuesday, August the 17th, and the time is uh, 5.03. I do apologize for being a few minutes late today, uh, but we do have a special call meeting, and the, the agenda has already been published. At this time, we do have a quorum. We do have one uh, commissioner communicating by telephone today, uh, Commissioner Pro Tem Clark. Uh, this time, we'll move forward with the approval of the minutes. The approval of minutes is for the Committee of the Whole from July 22, 2021, as my motion, can I get a second? Got a second by Commissioner Wynn. Any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Thank you, that motion carries will be sent to consent agenda. Uh, we're gonna move on for any other announcements tonight. I don't think we have any additional announcements. Uh, we will have some at the uh, commission meeting at six o'clock. We'll move on to application for street lights. I don't see uh, Commissioner Paul Bronson in the course you but I know this is one motion that he has this is a resolution approving a request for the installation of two street lights along with Misty Valley Drive pursuant to article 10 chapter 29 the code to be paid from the facilities management budget services to government electricity line item uh, someone like to make a motion in that regard As my motion can I get a second second by Commissioner Lucas uh, like I said this is our normal street light approval it's gone through all the processes and it's on here for a vote tonight. We do have a motion and a second. There's no further discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Aye. Thank you, that motion carries unanimously. Gonna move on to item B, which is a resolution approving a petition for installation of one street light on Ray Road, pursuant to Article 10, Chapter 29 of the Code to be paid from facilities management budget, services to government, electricity line item. That's my motion, can I get a second? A second by Commissioner Howell. Any question in regards to that item? Seeing no questions, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, aye. opposed, nay. Thank you, that motion carries. I'm gonna move on to uh, item four, concerning the millage rate. Uh, this is a ordinance reducing the millage rate from 20.331 to 19.901 to be levied and assessed for the 2021 upon the taxable property located in Macon Bibb County Tax District. We have a question for Commissioner, Commissioner Lucas. That item, I'm I was sorry. just a little slow with my finger. <laughs> it was on the previous items. Okay. Can I just make that quick comment? Yes, ma'am. Uh, at the uh, Pedestrian Safety Review Board meeting this morning, we did not have a quorum, so we couldn't take a vote on it, but I brought the issue that you and I have discussed concerning the, um, uh, evaluation for additional lighting on uh, Old Clinton Road yes, and also for a sidewalk at least one a sidewalk on one side of the, the street and the um, consensus was that they endorse that concept and want us to have that as the beginning and continue in any place where there there's insufficient lighting and or um, street um, sidewalks needed. So I just wanted to uh, let you know that, but we'll take a, a, a vote at the uh, next meeting next month. Thank you, Commissioner Lucas. And we'll, we hope to have that ready for referral uh, for next week on the items that we discussed before in your area. So uh, thank you for that. This is a millage rate reduction. Again, this is item A, reducing the millage rate from 20.331 to 19.901 mills to be levied and assessed for the year 2021 upon the taxable property located in Macon Bibb County District. Uh, that's my motion, can I get a second? Right. Second by Commissioner, right. Commissioner Jones. Uh, Commissioner Wynn, do you have a question? All right, sir. Okay, Commissioner Wynn would like to be a co-sponsor along with others, thank you. We do have a motion and second. Um, that is a .43 uh, rollback uh, for this year. So we have a motion and second, no further questions. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. Thank you, that motion carries unanimously. Again, for those of you who were not at, uh, at the meeting once we began, we have Mayor Pro Tem Clark uh, on the telephone. He'll be communicating and voting tonight by phone. All right, we're gonna move on to item five. Uh, item five is a uh, resolution to improve community safety and employee retention by rewarding experienced public safety employees with salaries increases tied to years of service. Uh, that item is sponsored by all nine commissioners as well as myself as mayor. 
Uh, can I get a motion officially for the record? A motion uh, for Commissioner Wilder and second by Commissioner Doan. Okay. I do want to read some additional information on that, and then we'll go through a, a slideshow here uh, that time. Just one second. Let me get my eyes. Okay. Whereas Macon Bibb County is fortunate to benefit from the service experience and expertise of its many law enforcement, fire, E911, rangers, and emergency management employees, including the, the Silver Service Sheriff, approximately 460 employees who served in at least these roles for more than 10 years. And whereas on November 17th, 2020, the Macon Bibb County Commission approved an ordinance adopting a new pay scale for all employees paid through Macon Bibb County payroll system. Whereas in 2021, the Macon Bibb County Administration implemented the new pay scale and Macon Bibb County Commission provided over $3 million in additional funding for the new pay scale adopting ordinance in March, 2021. And whereas the 2020 pay scale increased the salaries of many employees to bring them to pay levels that are comparable to local job market based on the professional duties of each employee, but did not take into account employee longevity into an account. The Macon Bibb County Commission desires to adopt a policy to provide pay incentives to employees serving in public safety capacities mentioned above on each employee's years of service to Macon Bibb County. If we'll move on to the first slide. You can see that we have the public safety, but we also include the 911, the Rangers, as well as the Civil Service uh, Sheriff and part of our public safety annual incentive, along with the Sheriff and the Fire. Next slide, please. The purpose is to retain the people who have spent years protecting us to attract new people to help protect our community. This is our retention uh, incentive. Next slide. There's, there's, this is the incentive here, public safety annual incentive. As you can see, for years starting 10 through 14, a uh, $2,500 incentive. Years 15 through 19 would be a $4,000 incentive. Years 20 and up will be a $5,500 incentive. The first full year total is $3 million. The estimated total of the annual incentive for our 10 years is gonna be $40 million investment. The annual amount increases each year as more people reach a five-year mark, and we projected this out 10 years based on our current employees. Next slide, please. This is how we'll be calculating the years and the payment. The incentives are paid in the paycheck on the first full pay period of the year. Incentives are considered revenue by the IRS and will be treated accordingly. The years of service is calculated on December the 31st. For example purposes, beginning this year, December the 31st of 2021, whatever number of years you've reached at that time, that's how you'll be treated. Example, if you have 14 years and eight months on December the 31st, 2021, a person receives the incentive for 14 years in January of 2022. If you have 15 years of service in June of 2022, it means a person incentive for the incentive for 15 years is January of 2023. Next slide. The first paycheck with the incentive will be January 28th of 2022. So let me be clear. Beginning December the 31st of this year, we will calculate how many years of experience uh, those public safety officers have. If they are still employed with Macon Bibb County on January the 1st of 2022, meaning they have not retired, if they're still employed, they will get a lump sum check for the amount that we discussed as a gross, a gross uh, amount. Age 10 to 14 will get a $2,500 check at the end of January. They'll continue to get that same check, $2,500 each year up until year 14. At year 15, they will get $4,000 check the second pay period of January, and they'll continue to get that 4,000 all the way from, from, from uh, 15 to 19. Once they get to 20 and up, they'll get a $5,500 check uh, as long as they're an employee on January, and they'll get that uh, as long as they're an employee with Macon Bibb County. Also keep in mind, these are for people who are currently in the public safety uh, departments that we identified. If you work in another department and you transfer to the sheriff's department and you've only been there two years, you do not get this incentive. You must be in the public safety department for 10 years. Uh, if you leave Macon Bibb County after 10 or 15 years and go to another department in Bibb County but not in these areas, you will no, no longer get that incentive. 
The purpose of this is very clear. We don't want somebody to work with Sheriff Davis or Chief Edwards department for 15 years and transfer to another department non-public safety related um, and lose that person for public safety but continue to get that raise, that incentive. That defeats the whole purpose of, of the incentive itself. And our ability to retain officers is something, the only way we're gonna build our workforce. Right now we are hiring deputies, we are hiring uh, recruits for the fire department, we are hiring E911. But the problem we have is as fast as we hire, we lose. And we gotta be able to not only recruit the very best, but we gotta retain those as well. So that is gonna be the resolution. I do have a question from Commissioner Tillman. Yeah, I would like to see data on uh, the, as far as the people that uh, that has happened to, because I support this, but what you, in the language, to me that defeats the purpose. I've always said that we should be cross training our workforce and to penalize someone if they're gonna move from one department to another and say they don't get the incentive, who came up with that? Cause that, that, that didn't, to me now, if they are a making bill of employee, they are making bill of employee no matter how long they've been here because their benefits don't change. And so if they move over to a different department, that's the incentive is to cross train folks and encourage them to maybe become public safety officers. So I, I, don't, I don't agree with that because the people that we want are the experienced people in making bill County. And those experienced people are people that's been working here 10, 15, 20 years, as opposed to somebody new off the street. So we, re, we should look at that and reconsider that and encourage folks because it's easier to recruit folks to come work in just our regular public uh, uh, workforce as opposed to law enforcement. So we really need to look at that and reconsider that, that if an employer transfers over and become a law enforcement or public safety officer, that itself is an incentive to move them over and it's easier to recruit non-public safety folks. I mean, wouldn't some of y'all agree with that? I, I understand your position. I think the reason this is in here, number one, is it's a resolution that I drafted, um, but it's, it's in there for this purpose, Commissioner Tillman. It, it doesn't before matter you, who you, drafted it, I'm saying. Commissioner Tillman, let me speak to you, ahead. that's a question I'm answering. First of all, you asked who, I, I don't know who put this in there, well, I'm telling you, I did, so I'm answering your question. But number two, what I don't want is for someone to be sitting behind a desk for nine years outside of public safety, automatically transfer to public safety for one year and get the same bonus that somebody has worked there for nine or two years in our public safety. You could transfer to 911, to the Sheriff's Department, to Civil Service Department, to all those different departments and still get it. You're not penalized. But that's, the, and, and the Sheriff sat in these meetings along with the Chief and this is something that we all agreed upon because what we want don't want to happen is to lose employees out of the Sheriff's Department where we have a substantial shortage to go to non-public safety related jobs in Bibb County and still get that incentive fund. It, it caused people to leave the Sheriff's Department and go to other departments, so we begin to compete with ourselves in there. That was the purpose of it. Of course, that's just my proposal now. Um, certainly and, that can be changed. Yeah, and, and that's why I'm suggesting to change that because ultimately, it don't matter who's sitting in on a meeting. Ultimately, in the end, it's up to the commission and we vote on it. It, it may be something you, that represented us didn't think about because I didn't have a conversation with anybody about this. I've often spoke up just like every other commissioner and said we need to do something. And a matter of fact, I think in 2015, uh, we may find that I did this same uh, similar resolution, call it an incentive pay, but we did not fund it on this level. Uh, so it does exist already as an incentive pay but not on this level. This level here takes it to the highest step as far as uh, putting some real teeth and funding behind it. But I do think that we should not. The incentive is, if we're looking to incentivize, recruit and keep folks, what's the rapid number most recently that we could say a number of folks are leaving? If we're trying to get more folks, why not encourage folks that's already within our workforce to go and become law enforcement officers and you're gonna receive this type of bonus as opposed to penalize them. And, Cause I've often said that that's what I think we need. Folks that already work for us. And so um, it, it's something that we should look at and consider, but just not say, well, because I want this or this is the way I see it. 
it's like we're micromanaging this or we're looking out for somebody that's, you know, we all ain't part of the team. And that's some of that silly mess we used to do in the military. Well, you didn't go to Iraq, so you ain't no real soldier. Uh, you didn't, you don't have as many years as I have, so you ain't, you know, qualified. I just think it's something we ought to consider differently. And, and this is something small that we could change. I can understand new recruits, but we can maybe say, hey, if you've been here at least five years or 10, but not just to say if somebody wants to change over because we're looking for numbers. And I'm thinking that's something you would agree. We're looking for numbers to get the numbers up. Yeah, I, I respect we disagree, but we're all entitled to our opinion. Commissioner Wynn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just for clarification, you can transfer from EMA to the Sheriff's Department and, and still yes. get the, that's what you're saying, All these basically, just not from another department. I think the incentive here is to in, to help our public safety. And I know it started, I'm just, this is my thought, I know it started out with we want to get more police officers or sheriffs out there because of the crime issue. And I think that it started there, but to bring in all of public safety, I think that's a, a fair thing to do. I, I like this idea. I also just want a little clarification. This is a one time, I mean, they get a bonus, I, I, what you want to call it, incentive, incentive pay, pay in January. Is that, sub, I know it's subject to taxes, but they get a lump sum payment without taxes being taken or the taxes no, it, being it all, taken? Well, whatever the IRS regulations calls for, they will have to do that. We'll a check for 2500 They'll get it 2500 minus taxes. It's a net, a okay. net check. Mm -hmm. So it'll be $2,500 each year during those periods of time, then $4,000 and $5,500. Uh, so that is, Commissioner Tillman? Yes, sir. So we're going to do this starting on December 31st. It starts January the 1st. They'll get paid Jan the January first. January 1st. But now we're also talking about giving, and this, this is what I'm saying, that it doesn't appear to be fair only on this level. We're going to come back later, and we've already talked about, and I think we passed it, about giving general employees on this lowest level starting off at $15 an hour. But we're not going to do that until 2023. We can address that when we get there. I, I'm just saying. We, we're not going to do that for we're actually a, another that two, e, two, two and a half years. But right now, that is our issue as far as morale, that for whatever reason, we always look at public safety is our bread and butter, as though the other general employees don't matter as much. But we always find ourselves speaking up for the small man and little man, but we're gonna go ahead now and incentivize our employees in public safety, but we're gonna wait to 2023 to bring up the minimum wage to the other ones. I just said we, when, when you know, and I always tease y'all about, you know, when Mallory needs to be in the room on some of these negotiations because he, he, he'll he boast and brag that he's in the room in these negotiations and he, he's a good negotiator. But at some point, we've got to, whether it's a clicker or something, we've just got to have more input as commission because this is what you're going to get. And, and, and we don't have a committee system where we're having conversations. And it's like, we got a mayor that's a strong mayor, but then when we sit here and have something that we agree or disagree with, it comes back, well, this is what I wanted, you know? And so I would ask commissioners, we gotta have input from everybody because I have a thought and an opinion too, that I want this whole workforce to feel like they uh, are, are good employees like years ago, it's a pleasure to work for Macon Bill County government. And how do we get there? But I think the way we get there is to recruit within, because you're gonna hear that, whether it's the sheriff department, whether it's fire department, everybody say, oh, I've been here 30 years, I need to be the sheriff, I need to be the, the, the chief, I need to be the supervisor. But we sometimes always go outside. So when we're now saying that we're gonna go outside and we wanna recruit more folks. We raised the fee to recruit more officers, new officers. But the people that already work for us, they don't have the luxury of being able to be to get this incentive. So, uh, you know, and, and it, like I say, it, it's, it's a good thing. We're on the right path, and I support it, but I just think that we ought to reconsider that portion of it. 
it's like I said, I respectfully disagree, but I want to clear up one thing that you mentioned. 139 employees that make less than $14 an hour will get a 14, move up to $14 an hour beginning January. So we, we phase that in for a reason. We'll talk about that one at the appropriate time when we get there. Uh, Commissioner Jones. <clears throat> and uh, my colleague, Commissioner Tillman over there, I, I think it's, I, I don't look at it as a penalty. I look at it strictly as an incentive in that we're gonna encourage people to stay we don't encourage new recruits to sign up. And if you think about it, let's, uh, let's suppose somebody's in facilities right now and they decide they want to transfer over to the fire department and then they've been there a year and then they're going to be eligible for this $2,500 come the following year. Well, I think you can imagine the other firefighters are going to say, well, you know, that's not right. We've been here for... 10 years or, or however many years, and, and all of a sudden somebody transferred. Yes, he was with Macon Bibb County, but now he's gonna, uh, he's gonna qualify for this, this incentive. So, you know, in my view, the primary function of government is public safety. That's the primary function of government. So I, I think it's a good plan. If there was something I didn't like about it, I'd certainly speak up and say so, but I think, I think both these resolutions are good. They're gonna bring the, the people at the lower echelon up, which they certainly deserve to, and, and we want all employees to feel important and, and, and show appreciation to them, and I think these two resolutions do that. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Jones. Mr. Tillman. Uh, and, and finally, those of us that was here, when we offer a incentive for folks to retire we gave them 70% on their pay. We also gave them a two year bridge that you had to have at least, I think it was uh, 10 years or uh, it was 25 years uh, and or age 55 or 10 years, age 55. We gave them a bridge, a two year bridge, meaning all those folks that didn't qualify that was age 53 we gave them a two year bridge and they qualified to be able to get 70%. There are officers walking around right now that would love to retire, but their pay now would be at 40%. So some folks don't think that's fair. And so if we just begin to sometime, you know, uh, we can't go back and, and redo that. Some folks out there living right now at 7% on, on their pay. And you ask around right now, officers, they can't afford to even retire right now because they only be getting 40 percent so that's why i'm just saying i just think that um that's right but i think we're on the right path to do this and so um uh, this is a, a, a hot topic button issue that we all want to see happen uh i think y'all have done a good job for those that were at the table but we have all said we want to do something to increase and support our public safety and this is what we're doing but I'm only speaking for those uh, level of employers that uh, are, are not gonna be able to get this bonus. I know we go back, we gave them Christmas bonuses and we doing all this stuff, uh, but it's just not the same because people are gonna hear and see and uh, uh, they're gonna look at it the same way. Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna think now, everybody, the last number they heard was the highest number. Oh, they're gonna get $5,000. You know, and so what if I transfer it over? I think that we're just missing an opportunity. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tillman. Well, I'm glad we have all nine commissioners uh, co-sponsoring this. Uh, let us know, at least in principle, we agree that we need to do something to incentivize. I appreciate the sheriff being here today, uh, fire chief being here, our E911 the director being here. I'm not sure if our civil service sheriff made it here or not. Uh, our EMA director is here in spirit. He called just a little earlier. Um, Everybody has a seat at the table, let's just be clear. This, this is a table here, we're having a conversation now. Uh, so everybody has a seat at the table, but when we develop this resolution, just like individual commissioners do, you're discussing that with people that you're getting input in. When I discuss this issue, I reached out to those people that I think affected the most, and I think our sheriff uh, and our public safety officers, our, our fire chief, they have their boots on the ground. They know what they believe will retain. We looked at exit interviews. There are some things as mayor and commissioners we can't change. We can't change some of the issues they have, but one thing we can change is public safety. Like many of you throughout the whole campaign I had when I campaigned and I just got in office, I can't control what happened before me. Public safety is what I heard. 
I've been to 11 forums for MVP, and it always comes up in every part of Macon Buick County, not just one single part, is we need a better police presence. We're never going to do that if we don't retain the officers we have. Those early outs where people got paid good money, that's one of the things that got us in this situation now when everybody left and left us without the experienced officers we need, and now we're trying to rebuild that farm. So I appreciate everybody supporting this measure tonight. I think it's the best that we have right now. I think it provides a great incentive. I think it's fair to all of our public safety employees, and I think it'll do the job it's intended to do so. So uh, having said that, um, we have a motion and second already. Uh, no further discussion. All those in favor of this motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, aye. opposed nay. That motion carries unanimously sent to consent agenda. Thank you. Gonna move on to item 5B. This is a resolution adopting a policy to increase the minimum wage for making Bibb County consolidated government employees to reach $15 per hour by calendar year 2023 and for other lawful purposes. That's my motion, can I get a second? Okay, I've got a second. Uh, let me go ahead and also read to do this. Whereas on November 17, 2020, Macon Bibb County Commission approved an ordinance adopting a pay scale for all employees through Macon Bibb County payroll system. Likewise, in 2020, the pay scale increased salaries of many employees to bring them to pay levels that are comparable with the local job market based on the professional duties of each employee, but established a minimum wage for Macon Bibb County of $26,332.18, or approximately $12.66 per hour. Macon Bibb County finds that employees earning 15 per hour more generally tend to be better suited to obtain health care, retain stable housing, have access to fresh and nutritious foods, and generally less susceptible to impacts of poverty. Uh, the intent of this, and you can, I'm not sure if we have a slideshow on this or not, but here's our thinking. We have 163 employees, uh, by my recollection, that are making under $15 an hour. Uh, we have 139 of those that make under $14 an hour. Uh, and the reason I believe that we need to take that step from 1266 to 14 in increments is, is the following. Number one, we can afford to do that in January. And immediately everybody at 1266 will get a raise to $14. Everybody under 14 will go to $14. That's a good first step. The next year we would go to $15 uh, an hour for everyone. So they would get that additional raise plus people that were between the 14 and 15. But here's the quandary. We have 186 employees that I remember uh, that are $15 and some change. So if you make that big jump from, four, from 1266 to 15, you immediately have a big compression issue where people may be supervising someone that's making just a two cent more or no differential at all. So in my opinion, um, and looking at all the finances for the county, we need to do this in two areas, $14 in January of next year, $15 after that, and then we do compression starting at $15 for all employees. I think this is a good first step. Uh, I've spoken with many mayors across uh, our county, um, our, our district, as well as the state of Georgia at our, our recent conference. Uh, I think we're going to lead the way on a lot of that who are not already doing that because as we learned during the pandemic, as we learned with situations recently, we must give people a livable wage in order to the, get them to kind of work and provide the benefits they need for their families. Uh, also, we need to make sure that we reward these employees. I said it before and I'll say it again. Everybody who participated in our trash truck one week, two week venture that we had in a recycling truck, got to realize firsthand that these men and women work hard, whether it's hot outside, cold outside, rainy outside, and 1266 is not getting it done. I think it shows that we value them as employees to make that substantial step and that we're already committing to doing this in 2023 to make sure we're financially able to do that. And then we can begin the compression for all of our employees. Public safety has always been the biggest need that we have and the biggest issue we have, and we started there first, taking care of our most vulnerable to lift these, by, by putting, doing these salaries, we're lifting a lot of people out of poverty. Just this action alone gets their salaries above that level. And then making that next step to 15, I think accomplishes that goal, and then we can start the compression. That is the reason we're doing it. We have looked at the numbers, as you recall, and looking at this as a resolution. Uh, we will come back with the commission uh, on the public safety piece and this piece here for appropriations for funding when we have more specific numbers because we're not sure who may be here, who may turn in their retirements and have all the numbers, calculate all the insurances to make sure that we're looking at it right. We have calculated benefits on all this. When I gave you that figure before, it included benefits. Also, something I failed to mention, I know, I know our public safety officers in particular are interested in this. Those figures we gave you earlier, um, those incentive pays that they get each year will be figured in their retirement, their pension plans. So they'll be able to average that, that money, those incentives, 
in their three-year pension plan to make sure it's included in their pension. It's not just a one-time bonus. It's going to be actually included in their pension plans. Uh, so they'll not only get that money, there will be a three-year average as well. And we think that accomplishes the goal. So uh, we do have a, a motion and second this, and I have a question for Commissioner Wynn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one little question. I, I certainly support this. I think this is great. And I understand the stepping, you know, from first year to $14 and then 15 that makes sense. Do we have someone working on a compression plan for us? Or how, it, how by the time we get to where we're going to have to address that, do we have someone working on that? Or will we do that? Well, we, we've <laughs> reached out, uh, as an administration, reached out to someone that does that type of work um, for, for many state governments. So they are about 12 to 18 months behind. That, that's another area. I didn't want to get into the complications of that. But it takes a while to do a true compression. And it's not just taking numbers like we did and being able to look at our seniority. Uh, in our seniority for public safety, not one person other than rank will be making more than somebody who started after them in our, in our equation. Um, but, yeah, we are looking at that. We've, we've actually reached out to two separate entities uh, to get pricing and time frames for a compression. But we don't feel like we're ready to do that on a whim, and we want to get it right the first time. That's why we think January 2023 would be the time to look at that next compression. That's a good idea. I just wanted to make sure we had that plan in place because that 2023 will come along pretty quick before we now, know Now, it. this does take care of compression for all public safety now, and it does take care of the longevity piece. But I appreciate that question. Any, any other questions on regards to the minimum wage? Mr. Tillman. Uh, yeah, on the, uh, the bridge, uh, what used to be, or, or is the policy still in place, that I think needs to be updated that a person working for making bib, if they leave and come back within six months, they can still get their required time and so forth. Um, is that in place, uh, Dr. Moffitt or Julie? Is that still in place? Was, is it six months or? Fortunately, it's different uh, depending on the pension plan that they're in. So it just varies depending on the three, the difference in the three pension plans. Mm -hmm. Well, because we're trying to uh, incentivize and keep the workforce, um, I'd be interested in looking at it and even um, looking at law enforcement officers who come back within a year, because I know it used to be within six months, and that we need to uh, be able to allow them to be able to receive this incentive if they've left within a year. Uh, and those some st stuff, Mr. Mayor, that we can talk about and discuss and see if we can update those policies on people that return to make and be a workforce after six months. Thank you, yeah, sir. I'm not sure what the policy is. I, I would even extend it further than that. I think that the goal to get people to come back that may be retired and come back and be able to stack some of their years up, I think they've been in public safety. I think that's a fair assessment and may, help us, Great may help us with our recruitment. Uh, do you have anything to add to that, Attorney McNeil? I just want to clarify with reference to the pension plans, all three of our pension plans are closed now. So if somebody leaves for any length of time and they come back, they go into the um, 457 plan. They don't go into the, any of the defined benefits plans anymore. But as far as the, the incentive pay, you know, y'all just approved the structure for, for how it is now. But if you want to revisit as far as someone leaving and coming back, that's certainly something you can add later. And, and one of the things, uh, uh, Attorney McNeil and, and Commission is, and I'm even curious if, if the sheriff would have an issue with this, is sometimes folks leave because they were trying to better themselves. Yeah. Now that we're going to put this incentive in place, if they've been gone up to whatever, mm -hmm. you know, we need to, are we r willing to increase that six months or year or what have you to get them back? and to give them their same time frame where they don't lose their, their, their time of service. Because it's just like when you're in public, what we call civil service, if you're in civil service in the military, you come home and you work at the postal service, you work at law enforcement, all that time is considered civil service. I don't know if there's uh, something that the sheriff or if y'all are familiar with it on the civil service, how does that work with making bills? Can we get on the same uh, timeline as those state employees where the civil service, they don't lose their civil service time? That, that would be a policy determination for the commission to Do make. Do we you know could, what the policy currently is, is what I'm asking. You, you would have that power to set those lines however okay. you want well, to. Well, Mr. Mayor, I'd be interested in looking at that policy and see if we can increase that policy. I think that would help with officers that have left or public safety folks that have left employers that have left and if they can come back and be able to receive this $15 an hour 
and that incentive pay. I think that'll help us uh, accomplish what we're trying to do. Sorry, I don't disagree with that statement. I, I'll be happy to look into doing that and speak with the sheriff and the, and the fire as well to make sure there's no complications there. Commissioner Wynn? Yeah, I just wanted to say, Commissioner Tillman, I'll, I'll work with you on that because I think that's a good idea. You know, say you have a one year period where you can come back and, and still have your the number of years you had before you left, or something like that. But I think we need to work on that. I think it's a good idea. In the private sector, they do that. Thank you, Commissioner Wynn. Uh, we do have a motion and second. If there's no further discussion in regards to the uh, minimum wage proposal, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries unanimously. This concludes our items on the agenda tonight. Um, we can't add anything to the agenda. Uh, we will need to add something potentially on the on the next phase. We do have a need to go into executive session, but it, it literally will not take about two or three minutes. Uh, the commissioner want to do that uh, pre-commission. Would you prefer to do that at, at the regular commission meeting? What's your pleasure? We've got 20 minutes. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go into executive session for purposes uh, discussing legal counsel to discuss pending or potential litigation, settlement claims, administration proceedings, and other judicial actions brought to or brought by or against Macon Bibb County and all those allowed by law as listed in our agenda. Uh, can I get a motion to go into executive session? Got a motion by who's who made that motion? Yeah. Motion by Commissioner Wynn, second by Commissioner Jones. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries, and we're now in executive session.
I got a motion to come out of executive session. Got a motion by Commissioner Wynn, second by Commissioner Wilder. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. We now have executive session. Um, no further business that brings us here. We'll be back at 6 o'clock for our regular commission meeting. This pre-commission meeting is hereby adjourned.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Macon Bibb County Commission meeting. Tonight is Tuesday, August the 17th, and the time is now 6 o'clock. First of all, we'd like to welcome everyone here, and I officially like to call this meeting to order. We'll begin this meeting like we do each and every commission meeting uh, by the prayer and Pledge of Allegiance. So those of you that can and will, please stand. And I'll call on Commissioner Bill Howell to lead us in the prayer tonight. Our Father, we thank you for this day you've given us. We thank you for this city you've given us to live in. We're thankful for all the people that have gone before us to lead us to where we're at today. Lord, we pray now as we go into this meeting that you'll lead, guide, and direct our every move. Peace and harmony prevail with all that are here and that your will will be done in each of our lives. We thank you for all you've done. We look forward to what you've got in store for us. In Jesus' name, amen. America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we begin our meeting tonight, uh, I wanted to make a uh, motion to amend the agenda to add a particular item. Uh, this is a emergency procurement. Um, I'll read what it is so, so you'll know the caption of this, and then we'll ask for a, a first and second to add it to the agenda. Uh, this, this is going to be an ordinance to make in Bibb County Commission to authorize a supplemental appropriation from the general fund balance to transfer out capital improvement funds in the amount of $37,716 in order to fund the purchase of a new car for the coroner's office, uh, which is Mr. Coroner Leon Jones. Uh, his vehicle had an unexpected fire, uh, and we must get him a vehicle, and we've located one on state contract uh, here in Macon Bibb County, and we had the funds uh, to secure that. So I'd like to uh, make a motion to add that to the agenda. Can I get a second? I second by Commissioner uh, Bronson. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Okay, we're going to add that to the agenda at the appropriate time. Uh, we, we do have a uh, important uh, business tonight, but we're going to start with the approval of minutes. Item 5A is a pro approval of minutes from August the 3rd, 2021 at our regular commission meeting. That's my motion. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Wynn. Any discussion in regards to that approval? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Thank you. That motion carries. We do have a presentation tonight. Uh, Dr. Henry Ficklin will be leading that presentation, and we have a group of young folks here uh, and some uh, a little more senior. Uh, so if you'll come forward, Dr. Ficklin, and read that presentation tonight. And then we'll call these uh, folks up here to uh, take a picture. You can read it to somebody. We know you're not shy, Sheree. <laughs> <laughs> Proclamation, Office of the Mayor, Macon Bill County, Georgia. Whereas you create Macon, a local youth development program, is, one, is a one-stop shop for youth biking in, middle Georgia, in the middle Georgia community, which houses the major Taylor Middle Georgia chapter of biking, the only official youth chapter in the world. And whereas American bicycle rider Marshall Walter Major Taylor, 1878 to 1932, was the world's first black sports superstar as the world cycling champion in 1899, American sprint champion in 1900, and set numerous track cycling records. And whereas he was nicknamed Major, in his youth in Indianapolis, and later known as the Worcester War Whirlwind after his adopted hometown in Massachusetts. And whereas he was the second African-American world champion in any sport after Canadian-born bantamweight boxer George Dixon of Boston won his title in 1891, and whereas during the Jim Crow area, 
era of strict racial segregation, Taylor had to fight prejudice just to get on the starting line. However, he faced closed doors and open hostility with remarkable dignity. And whereas the Macon built major Taylor youth cyclists face obstacles with dignity as well, they are the true ambassadors of our city and county to all they meet. And whereas the Macon built major Taylor youth cyclist team was the only youth team in the nation invited to the historic Harriet Tubman ride in Ithaca, New York, where they met silver medalist Nelson Valls, visited Harriet Tubman's home, a great American abolitionist and social activist, also called Moses, and visited three major colleges and so much more. Now, therefore, I, Lester M. Miller, do hereby proclaim August 2021 as you create Macon Youth Cyclist Month and urge all citizens to recognize and honor these young people for achieving national acclaim for their biking skills and their character as well. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the consolidated government to be affixed this 10th day of August 2021, and is signed by our mayor, Lester M. Miller. Hello, everyone. My name is Rontravia Smith, and my teammates, they call me Trey. I attend Westside High School as a senior now, and I joined the team at the very beginning, at the very beginning, and to see where we have grown is truly a blessing. When we started, we didn't have our own bikes, and now we are a national model for success. I personally won our Regents Positive Athlete Award because of cycling, and I completed Brad, the toughest one with 469 miles, completing 100 miles in one day. This program has changed my life, and I will be forever grateful for this opportunity. I am just happy that more kids will get a chance to be a Ucreate making kid. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Janet Greer. I'm the head coach for You Create Making Major Taylor Middle Georgia chapter, and I'm a junior ROTC instructor at Westside High School. I do want you to know that our local program is getting national attention because we are the only youth chapter in the world. Our kids are winning state and national awards, and this proclamation means the world to us because we were the only youth group in the nation invited to the Harriet Tubman Freedom Ride. Our kids rode their bikes to the steps of the White House, met Senator Raphael Warnock, visited Harriet Tubman's home, and so much more. And I want to publicly thank Commissioner Seth Clark, Bill Howe, Raymond Wilder, Virgil Watkins, Paul Bronson, and our mayor, Lester Miller, for supporting all of our programs. We have kids in every district represented here, so I invited all commissioners to come and take a picture with us. We appreciate you all. Thank you.
Thank you, Pastor Ficklin, for that. And thank you, uh, Sheree Stevens, uh, Director of Small Business Affairs, for her continued um, help with our youth. And many times, we spoke about this earlier, as we go around to these MVP forums, and we've had 11. we got number 12 coming up on Thursday with, with Mallory Jones that's going to close us out. Uh, we heard a lot that we need to get our children involved, and they need to be involved. They need to have something to do to help keep them off the streets. And these, these men and women and these young kids today are doing just that. Commissioner Howe, I know you want to make a couple of comments about this. Yeah, and I hate that they I hate that they've left because I I really want them to hear this. I I've, I've kind of been there from day one with this deal with with Sharice and you know with Trey and some of the other young men. Uh, what what they didn't bother sharing is that these kids, ever since they've been involved in this, part of their involvement has to, they have to have good grades, they have to keep up all their their school stuff. And none of these kids have gotten in trouble once they had this. And I think this is such a fine example of how uh, if we give kids a goal and something to strive for, I don't think it's that hard to, to get them on the right path in life. And I'm just so proud to be just a small part of it. But just to see these kids and to see them, when they, I know when Trey first come on, he was real shy and wouldn't talk. And, and now he's, as you can see, the spokesman of the crowd. So it's just this is a great program. I think this is a model for what we're looking for MVP. Thank you, Mr. Howell. And thank you, everyone, for your participation and your support. I know each and every one of us do. Uh, before we move on to public comments tonight, I would want to um, just give you a brief update. Uh, we've got a, a drawing of the convenience center that we've been talking about uh, that will go online first. And this is going to be downtown where Ackerman used to be right there before you get to the landfill. Um, so here it is. Uh, making convenience center number one on 11th Street location. Uh, we've already got the plans ready for that. We've selected the um, contractor for that, and we've allocated the funds for that, and they're beginning to do the work uh, now. As you can tell, before you, if you look to your right, we see a vicinity map. That's, that area there would represent where the scales will be at right now. So if you've been down to the landfill, that's, that's where it's at. But before you get there, you'll take a left on that paved road. And as soon as you take a left, what you'll see is an entrance there, uh, and you'll go through a gate. Uh, there'll be a nice gate that's all around there that, that you approved the funding for. And you'll see, for lack of a better term, the guard shack right there on the left that has a uh, camera. The person will be working there. It'll be heated and cooled, as well as uh, restroom facilities uh, there. You'll see a small parking area there. And as you go through there, you'll see a, new, a, a circular uh, oval area there that you'll see recycled. That doesn't mean all that's for recycling. But that's where a lot of your, um, your debris will go into and your recycling will go into around there. Uh, your bottom left-hand corner, you'll see these um, like brick walls, areas there. Uh, that's where your, your, what they call white goods will go, your refrigerators, your stoves, your, your couches and all that stuff. So this is what it's going to look like. This is five acres here, very clean. You'll have shrubbery there. You'll have fences there. It'll be well lit uh, there, and it'll have a um, person working there. And we'll have those hours. We're discussing those hours. It will be some hours on the weekend for those that are inter interested. Uh, and we'll have somebody manning this full time and able to assist um, elderly or, or disabled folks in taking some of this off. These recycle bins are only four feet high, so you can slide it directly off of something into there so you don't have to lift up a large area. But we'll do all of our recycling, our debris, and uh, all of the other goods there at this location to start with. We've got two additional maps that will be coming on other locations that we've committed that we'll bring before the commission, and then two more after that for a total of five. Uh, while we're on this screen, if you were to go to this location directly behind it where the animal shelter, uh, the old animal shelter used to be, is where we have a makeshift um, 10 roll-offs there now for people to bring their household debris and trash and things of that nature there now because, uh, as you saw yesterday, the landfill is officially closed for the public, and we're beginning our closure process. So just want to give you a brief update on the convenience center since we had this drawing here. Uh, we're going to take a site visit down there as a team, and also we'll have a groundbreaking there in the very near future. So uh, Chris Ford will be letting you know all that information. Mr. Watkins. And thank you, thank you for the um, for the graphic. I was curious, and it looks really nice in five acres. The budget I remember was like two thirty. I think this particular one was uh, we approved about 325, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around that. Um, that's because this is larger and because of uh, COVID figures, but we've already approved and appropriated that money. And the awardee was, I guess, Hofstetter? No, no, no. no he, he, 
he did the RFP. Uh, it's a local, I forget the name of the company who got Walker. No, it wasn't Walker. I'm sorry. Let me not talk. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's a minority vendor, I know, but we voted for this in open public, I think, two meetings ago. Yeah. So you just reminded we, we when you say we voted, we voted. Commission voted for, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. We, we voted okay. for the, uh, I think Hopsdale put out the RFP. Uh, our attorneys in our procurement department met with the group. Uh, they chose a seal bid. They, they chose the person who had the, the best price. Uh, that person was a, a minority vendor, and um, they were awarded the contract. And then we, uh, y'all approved the money at that, uh, that appropriation, and uh, they, they're beginning the work. We approve because I don't remember. We voted on the approval. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. I, I just I just pull it up. I just don't remember. No problem. Doing like actually voting on the award of the contract, but yes, okay. sir. I appreciate. It. All right, we're going to move on to public comments on agenda items first, and you'll be allotted five minutes. Our first speaker tonight is the Honorable C. Jack Ellis, uh, former mayor of Macon Bibb County. Uh, good to see you here, Mayor, and if you'll. Uh, go there, and uh, he indicated he wanted to talk about public safety, yeah. and I'm going to give him some leeway because yeah. uh, his second item was on the uh, general public's non-agenda, but it's somewhat related to public safety, so we're going to allow you five minutes to speak on that issue. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, members of this commission and citizens, uh, good afternoon. First of all, let me congratulate these cyclists. I've, I'm 75 now, and I've been cycling since I was a kid, and you never get too old to cycle. I'm a cyclist. I, a matter of fact, I'm going to donate two bicycles to those kids. But I also want to congratulate the um, EMA and the, and the emergency management system. He woke me up at 5 a.m. this morning <laughs> with, a, with a phone call and the alarms going off about the um, uh, 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 tornado, so I appreciate that. Uh, now, I want to commend you. What I came to talk, speak in behalf of is the pay raise for safe, public safety personnel. I want to uh, definitely, I think it's a great idea. We need to do everything we can to maintain and to re recruit and retain uh, good public safety personnel. We need to do that. We need to pay them a decent salary. And I commend you for that. However, I disagree. And, and one other thing I want to, uh, let, let, let me get with the good stuff before we talk about anything bad. I commend you for this program that you have. I was out of the country for the last six weeks, but I, under, I, I try to follow things on, on the internet and so forth, that you've had the various um, uh, forums and, 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 and uh, uh, town halls throughout the city addressing crime. And that's what we have to do. I've heard the sheriff say many times that this is a community effort, that it's deeper than just law enforcement, and it is. As a matter of fact, last Wednesday, on Political Rewind, I heard it while I was overseas, Dr. Hatcher the, uh, used to be the Surgeon General, the Dean of Morehouse School of Medicine, and others was on Bill Naggett, talking about this very same subject and what you must do, how the community must come together to address this problem. I invite you to pull up that podcast from last Wednesday and listen to these experts. One was, used to be the Surgeon General, and he was the director of the CDC, so you're definitely on the right track. Uh, Sheriff, I'm glad you're here because I want to, I don't know who sets policy as to how people are hired. I know when I was a mayor, we had a police department, so we set the policy as to age and so forth. I tend to disagree with an 18-year-old carrying a pistol by himself and being in, you know, I'm retired from the Army, and I know we say they get drafted at 18, but an 18-year-old in the Army, Tillman, you were in the Army, and others, they don't do anything by themselves. An 18-year-old can't even take a bullet home. He can't take a rifle. He can't do anything by himself. He's under strict supervision at all times. He's a private first class or a private E1. He's an Airman Basic. Or he's a seaman in the Navy, a private in the Marine Corps. I don't know what they're in the Coast Guard. But they don't have responsibility to make those kind of decisions about when to engage. They have supervisors sergeants and officers make those decisions. So I would totally, I, I think you ought to re, reassess whether you want to put an 18-year-old in that position. And that's one thing. Now, back to the, um, the, the, the uh, public safety as it relates to sidewalks, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, this morning I happened to have had to uh, drop, I live in Northwoods near Amundsen 
park. And I use it at least five days a week. This morning I happened to have had to drop my car down for repair. And I decided to walk home. I live right across the, the, my street, intersects uh, into Northwoods Academy, so you can know how far that is down here. So I walked from, dropped my car here on 3rd, and came here and walked all the way home. And I did it for a purpose. I wanted to see how difficult it was to negotiate Pierce Avenue where they don't have sidewalks. Now, bicycles are not supposed to be on sidewalks. By law, they are going to be on the street, but people walking. And it's a difficult situation to walk. There's no sidewalks between Ingleside and Gwinnett Place. There's no sidewalks. You have to walk almost in the streets, but there's space for a sidewalk if you want to walk in the grass. So I, I, I know we got a lot of money here, and I encourage you to look at putting sidewalks there. But don't stop there. Go across Riverside as you enter Amerson Park. The street very, is very, very narrow. And I use it, like I said, four or five times a week, getting into Amerson Park. We need to put sidewalks, bike trails, and sidewalks all the way into the park because it's very inaccessible right now for, for, for people to try to, uh, to, to access it. So I would hope that we can put sidewalks all the way into Amerson Park, going down from, from Ingleside all the way to Riverside into Amerson Park so everyone will have access to it. I don't know how much it would cost, but it can't be that much. It definitely, if we're talking about public safety and we're talking about the, the, the uh, pedestrians, uh, 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 injuries and fatalities and things of that nature. And speaking of walking and speaking of being in, in shape, I, while I was overseas, I happened to tune into YouTube and I saw Ron Wallman interviewing Al Tillman. And I noticed that Al Tillman had lost so much weight and he had talked about what, how he had gotten healthy. Now we know that this COVID has had a devastating effect on people who with pre-existing conditions such as obesity and other pre-existing conditions. So I commend you. You have been an example for so many of us and so many young people who are trying to, have been struggling with weight. And I know it's a struggle with weight. I have two daughters that have a big problem with their weight and I'm constantly trying to encourage them. So I encourage you to share your story that you shared on YouTube, on the Middle Georgia Spotlight. That's a, that's a plug. But, <laughs> but share, share that story. And, and I thought about you, and I said, well, Al, I'm going to you, bring you a gift. I hope you can wear it. Now, it could be too big for you, but I want to give you a gift that I got from Uganda where I serve as the honorary counselor and encourage you to continue to tell others about healthy living, walking, cycling, eating right, and living longer, and living better. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Ellis. Good to see you, sir. Okay, uh, tonight only, Commissioner Lucas. Uh, we, we have a very short agenda tonight, but we have important items on there, so I don't see any need to do the consent agenda since we only have five items for tonight's purposes. We're gonna read those one by one. Uh, a couple of them are, are street lights tonight only. <laughs> Streetlights, um, and since Paul Bronson has joined us for the meeting since he was late to the commission meeting, uh, we'll let him sponsor a couple of these items tonight. So we're gonna begin with item 10A, which is a resolution approving a request for installation of two streetlights along Misty Valley Drive, pursuant to Article 10 of Chapter 29, the code to be paid from the facilities management budget, uh, electricity line item. Uh, Commissioner Bronson, would you like to make that motion? So move. Got a motion by Commissioner Bronson, can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Wilder, any discussion? Here, no discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. No. Uh, that motion carries unanimously. We also have uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Seth Clark, who is here with us by telephone tonight, and he also votes in the affirmative. Going to move on to item B, which is an ordinance reducing the millage rate from 20.331 to 19.901, and I did say reducing the millage rate to be, pay, be levied and assessed for the year 2021 upon the taxable property located in Macon Bibb County District. Uh, that is my motion. Got to get a second. Second by Commissioner Jones. Uh, I, I gotta start looking to the left a little bit. I, I've been accused of looking to the right over here too much. Uh, probably because I'm always knowing that Commissioner Lucas is gonna say something. So we do have a motion in <laughs> second. Uh, <laughs> we can move her over there. Uh, motion in second to uh, reduce the millage rate by 0.43. Uh, that will take effect this year. All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries, thank you very much. Gonna move on to item C, which is a resolution 
to authorize the appropriation of general fund balance to improve community safety and employees retention by rewarding experienced public safety employees with salary increases tied to terms of service. Uh, and for those of you that was not at the pre-commission meeting, we'll go ahead and go through this slide uh, again uh, to educate everyone at home. So uh, as we uh, recall, we've got uh, several entities within the Macon Bibb County that we're going to be giving incentives to that we consider public safety. Uh, those entities include the Sheriff's Department, the Fire Department, the EMA, uh, the Civil Service Sheriff, the Rangers, as well as uh, E911. Uh, many of those representatives that are here today in support of this. The purpose of this is retain those who have spent years protecting us to attract new people to help protect our community. Next slide. Public Safety Annual Initiative. This is the breakdown that we're using here. Uh, if you are on any of these uh, departments and you've been there at least 10 years, between 10 and 14 years, you'll receive $2,500 each year during those period of years. 15 to 19, $4,000 each of those years. 20 years above, $5,500. Uh, the expected cost for the first year to implement this will be $3 million. The total estimated cost, including the incentives as well as the pension payments, as well as the, um, the benefits from Macon Bibb County, we expect to spend $40 million over the next 10 years in incentives for our public safety. This is how we're going to calculate the years of payment. The incentives are going to be paid in the paycheck of the first full period of the year. Incentives are considered revenue by IRS purposes and we'll follow their guidelines. The years of service is calculated on December the 31st. For example, this year, if you're 14 years and eight months on December the 31st of 2021, that means you're a 14 year person for purposes of January. If you're still an employee in January the 1st, you're an employee for that year and at the second check in January, you receive a check. 15 years of service in June of 22 means that you're 15 years and you'll receive that 15 year pay in 2023. The first paycheck incentive will begin on January the 28th. So let me be clear again. Uh, we'll go December the 31st of this year. That'll determine what number you've been here from Macon Bibb County. The second paycheck, which is your first full paycheck for the year of 2022, you'll receive a check for $2,500 each year from years 10 through 14. You receive a check for $4,000 each year from years 15 through 19, and you receive a check for $5,500 each year from years 20 and up. That will also include your averages, your three-year page for your pension plan. So these are going to be included in your pension plan, uh, and that is the crux of this uh, incentive, what we call incentive pay for our public safety. Uh, as earlier discussed, uh, the requirement that you um, the ordinance declares that you must be in these departments for the minimal time of 10 years. So if you are in another department and you transferred to an department outside of one of those public safety areas, do not get the credit for those times. Uh, likewise, if you leave that area, go into a non-departmentalized uh, of those areas there and go to another department, you will not continue to get that bonus because the purpose is to re retain uh, the very best, not only to recruit. As many of you know, we've been trying to increase, increase our public safety which is a top concern of all of our citizens in Macon Bibb County. But unfortunately, we've been able to hire them because this commission uh, and the previous commission instituted a pay scale that allowed each of our um, folks to get a raise. Um, but what it didn't count for is longevity. Uh, so we, we've been able to do that, but we must have a longevity to reward those who've been with our system for a long time. And I think this accomplishes that goal. So uh, that, is, that is my motion. Can I get a second? Got second by Commissioner Wilder. I heard first. Anyone have any questions or concerns in that regard? I also want to say that all nine commissioners and this mayor has sponsored this resolution together as a team, and they all supported it during pre-commission. So do we have a motion and second? Commissioner Jones, you have a question or, or Just comment? Just a comment that's, that's obvious, but the beauty of one, one of the great things about this is they get it in one lump sum. So they can do things like buy a car or, or do something home improvement or whatever. They have a large check instead of spread out all over the, the entire 12 months. So that's the beauty of it to me. Thanks, sir. Commissioner Wynn? Uh, yeah, I, I agree. The lump sum is great. I just, just for the people that have inquiring minds like me, to just tell the public what the difference between incentive and bonus and gratuities are. I'm not going to talk about gratuities because I'm, I'm not the lawyer that represents this board. Uh, this incentive is part of our policy, which means it's guaranteed if you're an employee on the first the day of January 2022 um, for that point. We're appropriating those funds, not at this time. We're doing the resolution. We'll come back 
and appropriate the money once we know how many people are still going to be here if they haven't retired uh, to do that. This is not a one and done bonus because this is part of your pay and it will be considered for pension purposes. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that to everybody. Thank you, Commissioner Wynn. And thank you for your support. Uh, any other questions? Seeing no questions, all those in favor of approving this public safety item, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Aye. That motion carries. Thank you very much. And I know our public safety officers will, will join me. Uh, item D is a resolution to authorize the appropriation to increase the minimum wage for making Bibb County Consolidated Government employees to reach $15 per hour by calendar year 2021. Uh, many of you have sponsored this uh, legislation. Would anyone like to make that motion? Okay. Mr. Wilder would like to make the motion. Anyone make a second? <laughs> Commissioner Jones makes a second. Uh, just further explanation on this motion is it is, is the intent of making Bibb County to, uh, we have about 163 employees that make less than $15, 139 of those make less than $14 an hour with uh, starting pay around $12.66. Is our intent to bring those employees from $12.66 to $14 in January, the first pay period of that year uh, to $14 an hour? And is our intent to go ahead and, and pay them $15 an hour for everyone not making $15 in 2023? Uh, we would come back with a proper budgeted amount for that appropriation and we'll do a mid-year adjustment since this has happened in the middle of the year. Uh, it'd be further our intent to uh, contract with someone to look at the uh, compression issue beginning in 2023 because we do have a number of employees that make just over $15 and we know that's going to create uh, situations where you may have a supervisor that only makes slightly more, maybe somebody who's got a different kind of uh, job description than the person before them. We value all of our employees. We believe this is a financial uh, stable way to do things and it's our intent to get some expert and not uh, rush the decision on the compression issue, but also put ourselves in a financial situation where we can afford to do this long term. So um, we do have a motion and second uh, on this. Do we have any other questions or concerns? Here are no questions. All those in favor of the minimum wage going to 15 in 2023 pursuant to this item D, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. <laughs> that motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right, we do have one item we added to the agenda tonight. Uh, that item is uh, what I'm calling E, which is gonna be 10E uh, purpose. This is an ordinance of the Macon Bibb County Commission to authorize a supplemental appropriation from the general fund to transfers out capital improvement funds in amount of $37,716 in order to fund the purchase of a new car for the coroner's office and for all other lawful purposes. Is my motion, can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Howard. Did you have a question, Commissioner Tillman? He already bought the car. We can't buy the car until y'all appropriate it, but we located the car. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries unanimously, and uh, tell Leon Jones he's got a new vehicle coming. Not really, but I will. Um, <laughs> uh, he inherited another vehicle from another county employee, and um, he... Um, made some improvements of that it didn't last too long and he, he had a fire uh, of that vehicle <laughs> and uh, that fire resulted into uh, the vehicle not being able to be used properly and maintained so we had to be forced to buy another one so we did an emergency procurement on this and i do believe i thought it was on a state contract but we did an emergency procurement uh, because we can't have our corner uh, putting the number of miles he does on the car and i have a vehicle so <laughs> thank you very much for that uh, that concludes our items on the agendas for tonight we do have several items to refer to committee of the whole. These items are not going to be final, uh, meaning we have a couple items we may need to add to those uh, between now and then. We do want to remember that next Tuesday we'll have a site visit to the uh, Macon Bibb County Health Department, uh, which will do the site visit as well as um, answer any questions that you have before uh, Commissioner Lucas in particular about things that we're doing over there and some of the programs that we have. So we'll have that. Uh, we do not have a need to go in executive session. Um, Tonight, we do have one more uh, public comment on non-agenda items. Yeah, we have a comment on non-agenda items tonight. Ms. Lynn Snyder for Georgia Women and those who stand with us. Ms. Snyder, uh, sorry, if you'll come forward to that microphone there. Thank you for being with us tonight. You have five minutes to speak. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm here because I'm concerned about how we're handling coronavirus in this community. The spike in cases means that hospitals across middle Georgia, the state, and the entire country are dealing with an overwhelming number of patients. Those patients are younger than the surge of last year and include children. 
Emergency services in Macon are being asked to divert patients to other hospitals. Non-essential inpatient procedures have been canceled and some patients are being treated in emergency rooms in their waiting areas because beds are not available. Staffing shortages and high levels of burnout are also being reported. I feel we have failed our citizens. We've been unable to convince them to believe in science. Some believe that the virus is a, is a hoax even after almost two years. Some believe that doctors are lying and calling all il illnesses COVID to make more money. Some think the vaccination is a microchip designed to watch us like Big Brother. Some claim they've never taken a drug, they would never take a, dr a drug without knowing what's in it. But these same naysayers beg for the vaccine as they gasp for breath before intubation. The same conspiracy theorists willingly take numerous drugs while hospitalized without ever asking their names or what is in them. They claim masks cause a buildup of carbon dioxide, uh, dioxide and suffocate us. Have you ever seen any doctors or nurses keel over? Yes, masks are uncomfortable, but not nearly as uncomfortable as acute respiratory distress syndrome from COVID pneumonia or having an endotracheal tube stuck down your throat. We have failed, ladies and gentlemen, and too many have died. We have failed and now the children are dying. How many more must die before the leaders take action? Right now, currently, 60% of Macon Bib citizens have not had even one injection. So we have 20 people in this room, 12 of them have not had one injection. Right now, we only have two methods to combat, combat the virus, max basket, <clears throat> mass vaccinations so that herd immunity is achieved and universal mask wearing. However, leaders have allowed bullies to cloud their judgment. They've listened to those bullies shout, my choice, my freedom, my liberty. But what about the rest of us? Have the rest of us no choice in society, no freedom to be free of illness, no liberty to live? Must we only listen to the loudest voices in the room and not the experts? Must we allow those bullies to threaten our doctors, nurses, teachers, principals, and business owners without repercussion? Are their rights more important than our right to be healthy? The right to send our children to school free from deadly infectious diseases? The right of businesses to serve customers without fear of dying? You all were elected to lead, not be intimidated by bullies. You were elected to listen to experts, not conspiracy theorists. You were elected to do what is best, even though it is hard. It's time to make the difficult decisions for the good of our citizens. Mandate masks for all indoor activities. Mandate vaccinations for all Make and Bib employees. Failure to act now and guess what? We'll be discussing the same issue next summer while the virus mutates again and more of us, especially our kids, die. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Snyder. And thank you for those comments. That's the only uh, non-agenda item we had to speak on tonight. Just want to give you one. We're talking about vaccination. Uh, certainly, I have my vaccination and, and everyone in my family, and I certainly encourage people to do the same, uh, making your own decision. But I, I believe from my family and myself, it was the right decision. I want to give you an update on a vaccination for making Bibb County employees. As you know, a couple of weeks ago, we, we passed a vaccination um, incentive because we want to incentive, incentivize people instead of penalizing people. Um, and I'm happy to report on the first check, uh, the first time for the uh, incentives, we had 748 out of 1,449 employees uh, which is about 52% vaccinated. And we know there's a significant amount of people that have already had their first shot that's waiting on their second shot. So I think Bibb County is, uh, as far as our employees, we're leading by example. Uh, we wanna make sure we don't have to shut down the government. And I think we're taking those precautions in regards to our employees. So that is an update on that. Once we have this second amount of information that comes in, uh, we'll share that with you as well as the public to know how this incentive works out. But I, I think it's well worth the money spent uh, I think the only true way we're going to get herd immunity is to have people continue to be vaccinated. So thank you all for your comments tonight. I appreciate all the uh, support and the unanimity and all the emotions that we had tonight. It's, it's nice to find common ground with a good team. Uh, and I, I think our public safety and our, and our most vulnerable employees are happy uh, with you tonight. 
uh, for a job well done. So until we see each other again next Tuesday, um, this meeting is hereby adjourned.